Hey folks, we're back with another episode of Three Men in Anime, only one week later. Yes. Rapid fire! It's uh, it's true, we binged an entire like 60 episode series over one day. It, yeah. was, it was impressive. We yeah, literally we, we... watched the entirety of Bleach, then we went through Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and then we thought, well, we've got an extra like six hours left on Sunday, um, let's do this one too. <laughs> To be fair, this and show doesn't actually take geek. six we, hours. We did the entirety of One Piece. <laughs> uh, at least we didn't try to squeeze De Detective Conan in there. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, we did knock out the show in one evening. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's because this is a short, short, a short show. Yes, this is a very short show. It's also one of my favorites. It is six episodes <laughs> long. Um, it is, of course, Fully Cooly, FLCL. Um, I'd just like to preface, when Eric says this is one of his favorites, Eric is known to be a sort of person who likes to fuck with people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all seriousness, and this, Eric, and this shows. <laughs> Eric, Eric is a big fan of absurdism. absurdism. Yes, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and there is a dis dis decided sur uh, absurdist quality to this show, shall we say. <laughs> um, and I mean, I don't mean in sort of your, your well, that's absurd. No, I mean like literally, like the actual definition of absurdist, the, like, this... like the philosophical concept of, yeah. of absurdism. Yeah, <laughs> this isn't so much a show as an experience. Yeah, I would actually agree with that. I, I would, I would act absolutely agree with that. <laughs> it is, uh, yeah. Okay, we could try to talk about the plot. <laughs> we could try. There is a plot, but there it is. is. A plot. There, there's a definite threat of a plot throughout the entire show. It is tertiary to everything else going on. Yeah. The plot is the plot is the same as trying to explain the the you know why did the chicken cross the road joke. Yeah, it's like why did the chicken cross the road because it did. Uh, okay, <laughs> just get to the other side. <laughs> duh. Yeah. <laughs> Except yeah. with this one, it's because well, aliens are invading. Oh, okay. Kinda, sorta. <laughs> well, only two really. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, the long story short of the the plot. Okay, I will sum up the plot very quickly. Because that, it actually can be done very quickly. A woman who is supposedly a space patrol agent comes to Earth to bust her pirate boyfriend out of containment by out of, who's being held by another alien faction who are on Earth to probably screw with it and do awful things. And she does this by recruiting a 12-year-old boy and uh, and basically summoning giant robots and guitars. There's a lot of guitars in this. There's a lot of guitars. Um, and that is, <laughs> that is the plot of the show. That is also not really what the show is about. No. No. <laughs> When we say the show's plot is incidental to the rest of the sh to what the show's actually yeah. about, it, we're not actually joking. What if 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 I said this isn't like I said earlier? If 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 I said this isn't a show, it's an experience. Then this isn't a story; it's a metaphor. It, oh, it's a metaphor. It's, it is, it's it is, a whole oh, bag absolutely. of metaphors. It is. Oh yes. There's a great. Um, okay, so there is a wonderful. Uh, the forward to okay. So one of my favorite comic books, which I mentioned before, is Astro City. And the compilations they've done for the, for the the trade paperbacks, the second compilation for the Confession story arc, has this, the forward for it is this wonderful piece written by Neil Gaiman. And one of the things that stuck out to me most in there was his little section on, in it where he talks about the fact that a story can be about more than what it's about. And that really applies to the show. Absolutely. Because it's about one thing, but it's about something else, too. And then it's about other things, too. And th th what those are about are about other... It, it's about a lot of stuff, and you can read a lot of really interesting stuff into it that might not be the authorial intent, but plays in really well. Um, the long... Sh I, I would say... I, I, I Eric and I have basically... Uh, the, the, uh, the most obvious read of the show and what it's you know, sort of actually about and this is, it is not the only thing it's about, obviously, but the obvious read is it's about puberty. Yeah, I mean, it's, 
It in is the, not yeah, it, the head of puberty. Um, like, holy shit, the amount of dicks that aren't actually dicks, but yeah, that, those look like dicks. <laughs> I mean, it's about it's it, you know it's not just puberty; it's coming of age also to to a large degree, yeah. and growing up, and the acceptance of responsibility and figuring out what you actually want. Yep, and how to develop a healthy relationship and working through your own big pile of neuroses. Yep. And the various types of relationships that exist. And eyebrows. Yes, and eyebrows. <laughs> also, <laughs> rock and roll, rock and roll, baseball, and robots. And anime. Yeah, oh god, yes. The, the, the amount of anime episode. references. <laughs> oh lordy. Uh, but yeah, like... So, there are a few major characters... Like, again, we're not going to try to recap like this episode, but this episode because that's just stupid. The show does not work that way. You could, and you'd be wrong to do so. It, like, honestly, uh, I, I, just because the the structure of the episodes are important in that they'll have themes, but they're... I'm going to be perfectly honest. Even if you watch this, like, once... once a, watch an episode a week... It all it will all still blend together in this sort of weird surrealist mishmash of insanity. Yes, it's all right. So uh, I, before we go to any further, I want to I want to get one thing off the ground. So before we start diving and talking about the show, I just sort of a quick: Do we think people should watch this show? And I think the answer from Eric and I is both a resounding yes. But Gav. I would say yes. Okay, definitely, definitely watch it. Look, the, the the reason that I'm hesitant to say is because I'm very much a, a structured kind of person. Right. I, I I don't go into the 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 absurdism. I need not. <laughs> Wait, myself sound really stupid. I need things explaining to me. But it's like <laughs> not like, but not like that. I I I like to go from A to B. I'm I'm fine going from A to Z as long as you give me the rest of the steps down the line. And uh, Fully Cooly has absolutely no interest in explaining anything. <laughs> this is true. It happened. <laughs> it happened because it happened, and it has happened. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I can get I can get my head around it, but while I was watching it, I felt my I felt really like as if something was incomplete. You know, it's like. All right, but but why? But as I've had chance now to to take a step back and think about it more, you know, it's like okay, I, I get you know, I get the I get the, I get the why. Now I've pieced it together in my own own head. But as I said there and then, you know, when we we're watching it, it doesn't like I said. There is a story, there is a plot, but it more it's more about basically giving you the the crib notes and letting you work out the details yourself. Yes. It explains. Uh, it expects I would say you that's to not to fill an unfair gaps. criticism. I would say that's not an unfair critic uh, statement. Yeah. Mm. Um. This is a show that desperately needs repeated viewings. Yes. Um. Yeah. Which is why the first couple of episodes, bad, yeah. without getting that confirmation of what's going on a little bit later on, are just like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> I mean, you like, I feel a little bad episode. making Gav do this with only one viewing because. <laughs> It really, it's a show that really demands repeated. Well, viewing. no, this is the thing though. You, you know, you've watched it X amount of times. Peter's watched it like twice. This is like the this, second this time. This is my third time through. watching it. Third time, sorry. Right. And I'm coming in fresh. So we've got that different of a difference of opinion. Yes. No, That's, I think it's actually yes. a good thing. Yeah. But yeah, if when you're coming into this raw, brand new, it's like, oh uh... my god. If you if you are not prepared, <laughs> if you are not prepared for it, or are not already someone who's a huge fan of this style of narrative. It can really throw you off. Um, Gav, Gav, Gav literally was like, "What the fuck?" Literally said, "What the fuck did I just watch after episode one?" <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> it's like as as angry and and upset I got at um at um Code Geass oh, the, because the, of the bullshit season one cliffhanger because yeah. of its cl- bullshit ending. It, it, like that that's that's the sort of you know that's the sort of person I am. If if you try and bait me with fucking what ifs. And I know that there's an explanation that you you clearly are withholding. That will piss me off. With this, it was a case of 
yes, you have lots of questions. We're not going to fucking answer them. We don't owe you shit. <laughs> you sit back and watch. And that's it. You know, it's they will they will complete this. This this is the thing. They they answer the questions, but they finish. This, sorry, they ask the questions. They don't necessarily answer them, but they complete the story. Yes, and it's like it's done. That is it. There is no more. If you want answers, that's that's down to you. Yeah, I mean, there's for a lot of the more basic, the sort of the basic questions this show's asking. You can figure that out from the, from stuff in the show. But it's they're not pointing it out to you. They're it's there, and if you look at you, you, you if you walk, you look at it, and go, oh, 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 okay, that I didn't think about that, huh? Mm. Okay, this is very much a show that requires audience engagement. Like, um, you know, it is not g- going to give you the answers. They're there. You just have to suss them out, and that's fine. Uh, in fact, I right really enjoy that, particularly with this style of show, in that it, it is as much about like absurd lunacy as it is about like trying to get you to figure out the answers on your own you know the one thing that I do appreciate about it though you know what this is absolutely immune to the internet (laughs) (laughs) it's like if anyone ever comes up with with a theory or an idea or a premise or something that they've worked out and said this is absolute definite truth you can 100% call out their bullshit because there is no fucking chance. <laughs> it is a case of, that is your opinion, that is your idea. He is my counterpoint. Yeah, there are a dozen different interpretations. There are, just and, and off every, the top of my head. And every single one is just as valid as the other. Pretty much, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, there, there are a few things you probably, you, you, that if you read into it, you've got your own issues. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, one or two, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I will say though, like, <laughs> even if you ignore, like, if you just go with the base, the most basic reading of the show, and you just appreciate it on the level of it's a coming of age story, a co- it's, a, it's it's basically you know the coming of age of a, this young this young this young boy and some of his friends, and it's bizarre, hilarious, and just surreal. You can appreciate it on that level and not care about anything else that's beneath that level. Because there is stuff below that, but you can appreciate it on a very surface level and it's fine. It it holds up to that. It holds up well there. Because there's so much yes. of that stuff there that's well executed. The comedy is it's funny. It's a funny it's, show. It's fucking hilarious. I still crack up at the whole cyborgs are different from robots. <laughs> <laughs> um which amusingly, so um, this is uh, sh- one of the sh- uh, two shows that really brought dubs up to the next level. Um, this and Bebop. Yep. Um, mm. Partially because the people in charge of the dubs for this were desperate to get everything, like the the intention and the comedy, and all the subtext as close as possible in the dubs, and worked very closely with the a- original Japanese cast, and- writers, and director. Um, right. So. The, the cyborgs are different than robots thing does not have a is not in the the Japanese dub but is in fact a translate uh, a an approximation of a pun <laughs> uh, <but laughs> about blue and the fish Japanese that just does not translate yeah so like so what if we did the robots and cyborgs that's perfect yes you should do that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, and I, I really appreciate that I will also say the th- the, the sort of structure with the show, when we're talking about how, you know, this is a show that, you know, you can interpret a lot of different ways and all that stuff, I think one of the things that makes it that you, you and that it really is helped by audio, by engagement and paying attention and thinking about it, the fact that it's only six episodes long really helps that. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. this show would not work as a, as a tor- anything longer than, like, you might no, the- stretch it out to 12, maybe, but I... Mm, the longer think, it gets, I think it'll start the, the to break the you... edges and disintegrate a past eight. Honestly. Yeah, the, the, yeah the, the longer it, the longer it runs, the more you expect answers. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. No, it, you, it is. It is... <laughs> it, it's like going. It's it's like going and watching a surrealist comedian. You know, the longer his show gets, the the the, the quicker you get tired of his bullshit. <laughs> you know, it, it's like okay, this is amusing in small doses. Uh, yeah, like, is this, this, this is yeah absurd. Like the com- the comedic aspect of this is the. I think probably the second best example of absurdist comedy I can think of. The other one being Monty Python. You are correct, sir. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is part of the reason why Monty Python sketches are so brilliant. They're nice, short, bite-sized, and you're left going, 
What the fuck did I just watch? <laughs> <laughs> the large. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously, it like. I think my my fav one of my favorite examples of that is uh, if Monty Python is just sure, sure sort of wait what the fuck is the sketch where Eric Idle is comes up to the door and he's basically identifying himself to the woman inside as a burglar, and she's just the you know played by I think prop it's it's one of the other pythons, and uh, you know and basically she's like you know, the 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 you know the gu- the woman inside's like. You're not an encyclopedia, encyclopedia salesman. Nope, ma'am, burglar. She, so she eventually lets him in. He's like, he starts selling her encyclopedias. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> because he's the world's greatest encyclopedia salesman. <laughs> That's the sort of thing you could almost see happening in this show. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. That... Yeah, no, absolutely. This yeah. Is exactly. It's the same style of humor, except that it's you know, from Japan, so it's a little bit different. It's like... Okay, just we, again, because it's like I think they do this first episode, so it's not really a spoiler. There's a running gag. Well, uh, well, it becomes a running gag for the sake of six episodes, where like they're trying to explain things in a in a, in a dinner table scene, and it's going back and forth, and eventually it, it starts to like become so like stilled and, and framed, where it actually transforms into uh, like a page of a manga. Yes, and it's it's them back and forth, back and forth, going from panel to panel to panel to panel to panel to panel. To panel. And talking over each other and getting more and more manic and all of the top, and it's like it's a cool looking scene. Eventually, the whole thing explodes, and then later on in the same sh- in the show, they they go back and they start doing the same thing until the dad says, "No, no, no, whoa, 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 no." We said we weren't going to do this again. We're, we're going to stick with anime. We're not going back to manga. That's far too time consuming and hard to do. <laughs> and he goes starts muttering under his breath. But if we don't do it, then start, they start accusing us of being lazy. And what do we do about that? <laughs> and you see in the background a bunch of artists with pens and such carrying the manga panels out of out of shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> there is a lot of fourth wall in this. Oh lordy, yes. Oh yes. But uh, I, I, so I, th- I you know, I. I, it is a show that really does like it really does sort of you know there's so much in there that you can look at that it's also it is a gorgeous show it is like like even when ignoring like out? again like ignoring the writing which is weird like it's just visually stunning the audio is great like both the I I, I agree with you Eric the it is one of the best dubs I've seen um uh, Kari Walgren's job as Haruko is just incredible. She's just... yes. Um, apparently, uh, I remember reading somewhere that the director actually prefers her to the Japanese voice actress. I'm not surprised. A- and apparently, she worked really hard to get the the same cadence and tone as the original as the original Japanese voice actress. I I totally believe that. She she absolutely just crushes the part. She's incredible. Oh, she absolutely does. Um, she she is the standout of the show, in my opinion. Um. Just it, the, as a voice acting job on in, in the dub, like everybody does a great job, like a really good job. Con yeah, I have zero complaints. I have zero complaints about the, the the voice acting in the in the dub. Um, I don't even have any criticisms for them. They're all very good, but she's just amazing. Yeah, <laughs> like I I like the subtitle, the original Japanese cast a lot. Also, I it, it it's it's a lot like Bebop that way, and that I like both casts a lot. Mm. Although, mm. unlike Bebop. There isn't one. There is like the I actually no. In both of them, the main female lead. I prefer. I prefer the. the I significantly prefer the the uh, the dub actress. Hmm. Uh, because holy crap, Faye is amazing in Bebop. Oh yeah, Faye's amazing <laughs> in Bebop. And uh, Haro it, Harumi is, is friggin' great and fully coolly. Oh my god, they're both like, they're both fantastic. But like it's. Oh. They're, they're they're literally two of the best dubs, and it's fantastic. And just the music is again like Bebop. The music's incredible. Yes. Uh, again, they handed the soundtrack to a one to a band in this case, as opposed to a, you know one composer. Uh, and her jazz band that she put together, apparently, or something, <laughs> or that she found. I don't know the full detail of the seatbelts, but the pillows who do the sound entire soundtrack to Fully Cooley are just they're great. It it is literally it literally they hand they said. 
you get, basically as far as as far as I, from what I understand, literally they said, you guys are doing do the just write the, the write the soundtrack to this show. <laughs> it's yours. We're not we're not. You, <laughs> and they just crushed it. It, it the music's great. Um, there's just, I mean like again, there's almost nothing about this show that I. The, literally the only complaint I could I, I, I will say this the first I so here's my my take on the first time I watched it the first time I tried watching a show I watched the first episode and wasn't really that interested in watching the rest of the show it didn't the first time I tried watching it didn't it did not hook me but everyone I knew who'd finished it loved the show and I'm like you know what fine it's short what the hell I'll give it another shot and I really, it, it was, I, I, I liked the first episode more the second time I watched it. And things just sort of clicked together much better after the first time I watched, when I watched through the whole thing. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good show, but I didn't, it didn't really, it didn't move up my sort of charts, it sort of into anywhere, like any of my sort of contention for like top whatever, until the second time I watched it. And I started noticing stuff I didn't notice the first time I watched it. That's when I realized there was something like real here, <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't just sort of a bit of absurdist fluff, which is sort of my opinion about the first time I watched it. Second time I noticed, started noticing stuff like, "Oh, wait a minute," <laughs> and mostly it was sort of the side characters that I started noticing some of the shit with. Um, um, well, what's her name? Uh. Minamori? Minamori, yeah, I, th- I think something like that. Hang on, let me get her name right, because it's Doubt, actually about his classmate. Uh, no, not her classmate. Uh, not his classmate. Um, oh, the um, uh, Mamimi. Mamimi, yes. Oh yeah, Mamimi's. I I did not pick up on some of the things the most going on with Mamimi. Character of the show. Yeah. I, there are a couple things I did not pick up about her the first time I watched the show. She is a much more layered and nuanced character than she seems like she is at first. <clears throat> yes. And a lot more fucked up than you, than than, it, than she seems than, than you, like you oh, know, yeah. you notice it sort of in the uh the, fi- the episode with the fires is where you first yep. start noticing it, but it, it does not really like on the second watching, you notice some of the stuff the way she's acting before that episode and you, it everything really clicks then. It's like oh 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 yeah. she's. Mm-hmm. She's got all kinds of problems. Yeah. yeah. But she's a... So, Nina, yeah, Nina Moore is probably the most interesting and complex character of the show. Oh, uh, Mamimi? Uh, Mamimi, yes, not Nina Moore. Yeah. Um, sorry, they, they have similar names, but are entirely different people. Yeah. <laughs> like, Mamimi is, like, you get the impression that she doesn't have any friends and has a lot of problems with, like dealing with her own shit and just yeah and is prone to to bouts of delusion and yeah as the show goes on you realize just how badly broken she is yep. <laughs> because you know you realize that she real like she you you know it's it you really realize exactly how she really she has exactly one friend yeah and their relationship is fucked up. Their relationship is all kinds of fucked. Yeah. Like, like her, her and Nauta, like what a what a mess of a relationship that is. Yeah. Um. I mean, the thing the thing is that there is not a fully functional character in the show. Everybody is. <laughs> um, Actually, no, that's not uh, fair. What's her name? Um. You know, Mori, <clears throat> you know, Mori is not fully functional. She is, but well, even eh, she's mo- she, she's she's high fully- functioning, but she's not fully functional. Yeah. Um, I think probably the doubt has two male friends who are, are very much sort they're, of the, they're just yeah they're, 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 they're sort of just normal they're normal twelve year olds. Yeah, they're, they're just. But Nina Mori, they're Nina Mori figures the most... her shit out faster than basically almost any of the other major characters. Yes, like a lot no. faster, but that's because she's. Her problems are easier to, to sort of get a handle on, really. And she's probably the smartest person in the show. Yeah, probably. Despite being like twelve. Yeah. 
Um, She's also a medium of lying psychopath, but... <laughs> yeah, but... <sighs> no, that's not true. She's not a psychopath. She's just manipulative. She's manipulative, but she, she's 12. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it... <sighs> Kids, kids are that way sometimes, and you know it's pretty oh, clear absolutely. she's. It's pretty clear she's working through some shit. I mean, and she's getting better as the show at, towards the end. Um, Nauta is, for someone who's as broken as he is, he's surprisingly functional. <laughs> yes. Um, um. Poor, poor Nauta. Like the the inferiority complex he has, he has with his brother. Yeah. The um his complete lack of a, a a decent role model to help model himself after like yeah. his dad's a giant wreck he is uh like possibly the most immature person in the show <laughs> um it's yeah it, it it's, yeah. it's either him or Har- 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 Haruko Haruko's Haruko's immaturity is also a bit of an act honestly yeah Okay. Like she knows exactly what she's doing. She's having fun doing it, but she's no. She knows what she's doing and how it affects people around her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Nauta's dad, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, is honestly completely clueless. Like, he he's got his big pile of obsessions and, and weirdness, and ha- cannot see past them. Even though he tries, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's mentioned a couple of times that he was um, a, a pre- pretty much of a, a big shot at one point or another. He was a, um, he was a reporter of some sort. A big, big time reporter, I think. And then uh, he just gave it all up and uh, uh, went except like, he, freelance. Except they say he was the the co-editor of a zine. That's like saying he helped on a blog. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's hard to it's hard to tell. It's it's the implication the implication I got is he was doing something he was doing something fairly he was doing something that was bordering on substantial and completely failed. Yes, and basically, you know, now runs a really crappy bread shop. Yeah, that that's it. So yeah, he was he was a big time reporter. Got well. Well, he wasn't a big time reporter. He was trying to be a big time reporter. Well, no, from what I understood, he was a big time reporter, but then he got ruined somehow through something that happened, and then basically ended up running a bread shop because it was the only thing he could do. There's a, it's the, again. This is all the. This is how vague they leave it. To... It's also not that. Well, important. it's also because yeah, it, it's also not important. No, like, I got the impression that he was on his way to being a reporter and then just fucked up. Well, the, the only reason it's the only reason it's, it's technically relevant is because it, there is a pl- there is a plot point about um, that links. Um, it's is it Mamimi? No, it's, uh, it's no, Nidamore. It's I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, where where um, Nidamore's parents are are politically important. In, dad's, in the yeah, game. dad's the mayor, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yes. And Nauta's dad figures out this giant scandal and publishes it in his crappy little zine, um, which gives him a, a brief bit uh, uh, of fame as an actual reporter, and completely fucks up poor Dina Mori's life. <sighs> and, well, he feels kind of bad about that in that he acknowledges that she's collateral damage in this. He can't really see how that's his fault. <sighs> Yeah. As we said, there's there's not a, there's not a character in this show that isn't damaged in some way, one or one way or the other. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, again, even even going with that, it the... sound much more of a downer than it is because yeah, is, again, it, it's, <laughs> despite these people being fundamentally broken, it's weirdly uplifting. It's in mm. oh, absolutely. Like the the whole thing with Ninimori is like, yeah, her family's been ruined through political scandal. And all the only thing that she like notices from that entire situation is that her mom and dad are talking again. Well, yeah, at the end, like they they basically her parents decide not to get divorced. Yeah, yeah because they're in a high pressure political relationship. 
So there's I don't pressure think on the that. family. I think it's the, I think it's that like the between that and Nina, you know, Mori wanting to be um actually like talking to them, they come to the realization that oh there have been problems in our relationship for a long time. Let's work on them. Mm. It is literally the most like the implicate like it, she is she as I said she gets through her shit the 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 most you know you know the most alacrity and yes you know it's uh, her home her home life seems to have gotten better I we don't know for a fact because <laughs> she's not the main character. <laughs> The the thing the thing that I did notice out of this entire show is that every single character that comes into this show, pretty much, through, you know, they, they all start the show in kind of like a, a moping, self indulgent holding pattern, get smashed into the shit face first, literally, and come out better. Yes. Yeah, for the it's it's it's, yeah. it's literally the it's the again the the this is the metaphor that I took from it. It's the whole shit. I'll get off the pot kind of mentality. It's like yeah, shit's bad, but if you carry on in the same, if you don't face it, if you carry on in the same pattern, just going round and round in circles, it's gonna stay that way. Yep. Yeah, it might be hard. It might be shit. It might make you feel worse. But if you just dive in and smash through it, there's something better on the other side. And every single character in this show gets that. Yes, kind of. Well, and one, when you say one character who doesn't to a degree, to yeah, for yeah, Commander Amaro does not get that. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's okay. He has eyebrows. <laughs> he has. He does have counter counterbalance eyebrows. Ah, uh, yeah. I I was actually going to say the one the, that wasn't the one I was thinking of. I was thinking of Har- Haruku doesn't really, but she also doesn't. She's not really in a holding pattern per se. She's actually actively pursuing an actual goal. Yes, it's a... she's pursuing an actual goal, and she's not looking for anything else. She's yeah. not. She trying... is. She yeah. is the shitstorm that. Yes. That, that, <laughs> yes. That, that... She. She is the force of nature. She comes zooming in on her Vespa and beats her about the head and shoulders with her uh, Gibson EB60. That's literally what she does. I am not kidding. <laughs> Uh, her guitar's a Rickenbacker, if I remember correctly. Is it a Rickenbacker? Right, right. The uh, the the other one is the EB60. Yeah. Adamus the EB60. Yep. It's a Rickenbacker with a gas engine on the back. Yes. With a pull cord. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> no, but yeah. So Haruko is um. Let's not be. Well, let's not be. Let, let let us let us be blunt about this. She's a sociopath. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And in many ways, she is a terrible person. Oh, yes. But there is this weird sort of quasi-nurturing aspect to her that's very odd. The thing that I, I took away is that... it. I mean, it, it, she comes in claiming to be an alien, and it's like, oh, yeah, whatever, bullshit. And it turns out she was actually true. Yeah. Um... Like literally, she she fly. Last episode, she flies away on a on a on a Vespa, like yeah. into the sky. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if the 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 impression that I got from it is that it she it, she's very much like it's like visiting uh you know a, a local like petting zoo. You know, it's like none of the you know, you know the you know keeping an ant farm kind of situation. She she's visiting for a while. She's no real connection to any of these small, you know, mewling animals that are around her, but she likes one or two. They're, they're cute, you know, the 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 they entertain her for a while. Not in a malicious way, just literally a case of, oh, that was cute. Bye. The one thing is she actually does form a connection with one person, which is Naoto. Mm. Yes. She and Naoto actually develop a a, a, a proper relationship. But you kind of still... That is. It's not the one Naoto wants, though. No, mm. you you still kind of get that impression though that that relationship is only there because it's she he's a means to her ends. Well, that's what it's that's the way it starts is the thing. It, it's definitely the way it starts, and, and right down to the the, the final crazy ass fight. Um, she yeah, she's still wants to hang out with him. It's just she doesn't want anything romantic, which is what Nauta wants. No, Which he, makes sense because she's at least twenty-two and he's twelve. Yeah, yeah. 
No, she he is very much he he very much develops into a little brother for her in a lot of ways. Yes. Which is not what he wants. <laughs> but, you know, she's you know, and he the thing is he actually accepts that remarkably well at the end. Yeah. Because he's figured some shit out. It's like, yeah, I've got feelings for her. I love her, but <clears throat> Ah, she doesn't well. feel that way about me. Oh well. <laughs> I guess I'll <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> well, I've got a world. guitar, which is pretty awesome and has a gas engine on it. Yeah. So guess I'll learn how to play guitar. <laughs> also, I saved the city at least twice, so Yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't count. He doesn't care about that. <laughs> he doesn't, but he it, he doesn't, but it's still something that's sort of it's a, it's a little bit of, you know accomplishment that's there for it, you know, that's sort of, you know, just... There that's the there. That's, yes. Especially... Again, again much is. <clears throat> it's one of those... It, it's one of those moments where, for the rest of his life, it's like, you know, whatever situation comes in front of him, like any normal, mundane sort of problem, it's like, dude, you saved the city. This is fucking easy. Dude, yeah, like, dude, you you had to deal with... This, what is it? What's the name of it? Like, just the bizarre uh, robots and shit... You got eaten by a giant. You got eaten by a robot and fought aliens multiple times. You had giant robots come out of your forehead, or the back of your head, or definitely robots coming out of your head several times. <laughs> and you smacked a baseball back into the atmosphere. Not a baseball, a bomb, a baseball-shaped bomb the size of I don't know. It was not small. Not small. <laughs> And no, to be fair, he didn't actually knock it back out. He not, didn't knock it out. He, he stopped, stopped it. it. It was, uh, it was, um, Haruka Haruka knocked, it, knocked it out. Yeah. Haruka came Haruka in. helped yeah. him out. Yeah. But, you know, he's but 12. She was totally, she was totally <laughs> bugging off to, to leave him behind because she didn't think he'd swing. Yep. And, he it, like, oh, all right. I guess I, guess I'm back in to help out. In one of the most metaphorical of metaphorical episodes in the metaphorical, metaphorical show. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> Holy cow. <clears throat> Swing your shot, kids! Swing, <laughs> take a swing. Swing the bat, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> <clears throat> that's I know the part that's really also the point where um, my Mimi start starts losing interest in Naoto also because he swung the bat, which means he's growing up, which means he's going to leave her behind too. Yeah, which take, is very take much him. like that one expression where she and she just says he swung the bat. Every, all of that, you can see the entire thought process in her head. <laughs> I mean, okay, let, let, let's try to just like un untangle a little bit of the knot there. So, Mamimi, the, the, right, the reasoning for the, this whole episode basically untangles so much. It's the baseball episode, okay? Yep. Nauta's big brother left to go live in America and, and play because baseball. He, play baseball. Yeah. He got scouted by a, well, we assume, like, a professional baseball team, um, and he's now living in America. It's either that or college. Oh, college, yeah. He's you know, on a baseball scholarship, whatever. I don't know. Um, yeah, and um, <clears throat> sorry, what was her name again? Mamimi. 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 Mamimi feels that he left her. Like they were in a relationship, and um, you know, he left and went to America, and now he won't return her calls and. Um, letters, and he's he's got himself an American girlfriend, and he's an asshole. And you start to get the impression that Mamimi might not be all that balanced because she's kind of latched onto his twelve-year-old brother. She's seventeen, by the way. Um, and has a very odd relationship with him, sometimes on a physical basis, not sexual, but physical. Um. And the further and further in you get, you start to realize that maybe Mamimi and, and his brother weren't actually a thing. It's Only in her so head. Entirely we, we... one sided on her part. Yeah. Things yeah. We know, things we know. They knew each other. He saved he saved her from the when the schoolhouse burned down. She had thing she had a thing for him. And they were at least sort of friends because Naoto actually no, knows her and Seems to think that they were. Seems to think at least that her brother, he, she, and her brother were friends at least. Mm. It. I am fairly certain he knows that they were not dating, actually dating. Um. 
and you know it's and the thing is it's she doesn't know that you know she it's you know Naruto's the one who who eventually tells her that yeah he has an Ameri- he has a girlfriend in America and you know he's the one who realizes that she, his brother's not writing to her <laughs> and the fact the first whole episode is Naruto like holding on to that that secret and, and trying to figure out how to tell her yep but yeah so that that baseball episode you know it's <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've with her. It's like, like we said. I mean, that, that that's the whole turning point of the series, really. It's when Naruto stands up for himself, and you know, and like you say, swings his bat. Um, I love the fucking imagery of that. For, as the satellite breaks up, like it basically, it's a, it's a it's an orbital um, weapon, and it's falling to the planet. And as it breaks up, it basically collapses in such a way that it turns into it. It actually turns into a hand, which pitches the bomb. The bomb. Yeah. Yeah. As a baseball, <laughs> it's so. It's this so show well loves hands. The show absolutely adores hands. Yes, yes, they are everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, like this. This is the thing. This, I mean, there's so much packed into it. Like I said, it is absurdity. And if you do get the chance to go back and watch it again and unpack what you're actually seeing, and and. And you know, especially if you've got that chance to now you know the characters and have a go again. There's so much going on. I mean, that's that that little bit that I just described there, or attempted to describe and butchered horribly, um, <laughs> is only like like the middle third. Not even. Not even that. I think there's, it's like there's one episode. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean like the, of that episode. I mean, right, just right, the yes. whole chunk beforehand. Yeah, she's got the the whole mess with like Nauta's dad, and Amaro showing up, and the Pop actual Fuller baseball team, and the baseball team, and the android, and the desiccated corpse, and <laughs> yeah, all of this is interconnected. <laughs> It and actually makes, makes sense if you sense. actually watch it, folks. Yeah. You watch the show. This, this is going to sound like the most wildly rambling episode we've ever done, but it, like you said, it's difficult to actually nail down one piece of the plot because it's all over the place. But yeah, but you know, I, the thing is, is that I don't think my my gut my gut sort of read on my movie is that she was crushing hard on Naruto's brother before he mm. left, and she mm-hmm. didn't and she didn't sort of develop she didn't really sort of fall in that position of thinking she had a real relationship with him until after he left. Yeah. That's sort of the read I get from it, is that's when she fell apart, and that's when she latched onto Naota. Because, again, she didn't have... She doesn't have friends. Um, we, we find out that she's bullied a lot. Um, I mean, we don't see it, but it's mentioned offhandedly by someone, and we see the aftermath a couple times, like where she's like picking herself up out of the river. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's got a fair past. With um, we mentioned earlier the the fires and the, the now it's his brother saved her from a fire. Yeah, yeah it, it's heavily she, implied she, that she like, started that fire. Yeah, it's she hates school because people treated her like shit. Is the implication? Yeah. And by the end, she's kind of gotten herself up off the ground and is moving in an actual direction. Yeah. Uh, the, the the coda for her is now to saying she quit school and fucked off to become a photographer. And we see uh, one of her one of the photos she takes at the in the last episode on the cover of a magazine. Yeah. God, I love that episode. It's Jesus Christ, it's, I love it. it's, the final it's fucking brilliant. gorgeous. It's just fucking gorgeous, it and really is. so much shit just happens and comes to a head, and it... Jesus Christ, I love that episode. <laughs> no, it and the baseball episode are definitively my two favorites. Oh, yes. Um, um, I also really the like the one with uh, the... Nina Mori and the, the scissors monster that comes out of her head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially the bit where she's kicking at the robot and her bloomers get caught and come off and the robot's trying to aim to get her legs through the friggin' bloomers. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good that one. Yeah. It really, it's a funny show, folks. Um, the episode with the uh, 
with the with the gun battle. Uh, yes, is visually yeah. stunning. I it, I don't. It's not. It's not. It doesn't hold a place for me like the way the baseball episode or the finale does for me. But holy cow, some of the visual jokes in that episode. So, that is probably the funniest episode, it honestly. Might be. Like between the loop and the third references, and <laughs> the the robots are different from cyborgs, which comes up like three different times. <laughs> and the and uh, the the oddly surprising. I mean, this came out in around about two thousand, so it's on time. The South Park references. Yes. Of all things, the South Park references. <laughs> An entire scene done in South Park style animation because yeah. they could. Yeah, just... And then the, the, the scene later on where the the the, the riverbank and the entire the thing is, Nout has got a thing about his head. He's always got a hat or a bandage or a well, cover. The or... robots come out and they they manifest as these big like cubic looking zits. Yeah. Zits like so a... he's always got something on his head, and this entire episode he's been wearing a hoodie while they've been running around the field playing airsoft. And there's one scene where somebody talks to him, he turns around and he's got the strings pulled up tight and he's just like... Woo, woo, woo. He's like <laughs> yes. fucking Kenny. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> or just a bit where the um, where Amaro's assistant is there with the friggin' Barrett Light 50 firing at the uh, at Conti. <laughs> 7 of 9! T-800! Cyborg! Cyborg! And, he, and my meme is just sitting there next door going... You, you know he's he, he's a robot, not a cyborg. It's a pretty common mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> and that's entirely in the dub. That like it's the um yeah. in the uh, Japanese. It's a whole bit because Conti's blue. She's going on about him being blue and blue fish and mispronouncing it. And um, and Mimi is sitting there trying to correct her on her pronunciation <laughs> which is great if you speak Japanese which is also great yes <laughs> but if you don't speak Japanese it makes no goddamn sense oh my god but yeah no it's there's, it, as I said the show's really funny and there's a lot of really interesting stuff in there like the, the just the, the way the relationships you the way you, the, the, you look at the way the relationships between the characters develop and change over the course of the show mm. and Almost always for the by the end for the better in every case. Yes, uh, um, everyone ends up a better person at the end of this. Yeah, like even Nauta's loser dad, and I, I hesitate to call him a loser because he's definitely doing what he wants to be, what he wants to do. Yeah. Like he's achieving his own goals. <laughs> um, but you know, but... Uh, and and ending up as a desiccated husk in a in a closet kind of <laughs> gave him a new perspective on life. <laughs> I will say... Well, more to the point, he starts, like, not just paying more attention to Naoto, but also respecting his choices and giving him space. Yeah, the thing, and, yeah that's the big thing, is he him. becomes a much better yeah. father by the end. Yes. Mm. Because he's like, a like he, he, terrible... He accepts his responsibility. He's a terrible father beforehand. Oh, my God. Absolutely <laughs> shitty. Like, you understand why Naoto's brother left to go play baseball in America. Yes. <laughs> it's like, I'd want out too. Screw that guy. That's the thing. Now, just that is totally the kind of guy I would hang out with, but I would not want to be related to him. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be able to leave. Like that is a dude that is like great in like two hour bouts, so that you need to be away from him for a week. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, he's uh, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. But yeah, everyone ends up in a healthier place at the end. Yes. Um, like you know, and... even to the, you know, even to the point where like you can see that like, you know, I prior to that, you know, Nauta had you know his 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 two buddies who did hang out with Nina Mori, but it didn't really seem like he and Nina Mori hung out much. And by the end, they, they it's the 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 four of them are a full group now. Yeah, she's hanging out with the with all, all four of them are hanging out together, and I think that's actually kind of neat that they've all become the she and she and Nauta have actually become, like it's very clear that she was friends with Nauta's buddies and Nauta's friends with them, but like that there wasn't a link between them until the at, what happened in the show happens, right, and then they, they, and now they've you know, 
because of it's that, implied she's got a bit of a crush on Naoto also. Oh yeah, no, that's definite. Yes, she, she's she's got a crush on on, on him, and she's completely oblivious. Oh, he has partly no because he's got uh, Nino Mori like he's got Mamimi hanging so, all over him. He's got Mamimi hanging all over him. He's got Haruko completely sucking up all the oxygen in the room. Yeah. <laughs> and there's poor Nino Mori. I. I hesitate to say poor Nina Mori because she like again she is the most together person in the entire show yeah <laughs> <laughs> well let's see let's say oh my crush has oh god jeez dude yeah I, I'm oh, just gonna okay. wait until this clears up I'm just gonna to wait till this yeah I'm gonna wait till all this shit clears up and then I'll make a move <laughs> it's like Okay, he has no clue that I, I like him, and that's because oh dear lord, that's why he has no. That's clue. because he, <laughs> like, it's pretty clear that like up until the point where she sees like Mamimi and Haruko, she's like, uh, it's like she has no clue why he's just does not get what she's what she's doing. It's like well, she she's uh, aware of uh, Mamimi um, as much as anyone else. Um, like she's fully aware uh, of her and, and is doesn't like her because. Well, the thing well, is, up until yeah. she, uh, I, the impression I got was that she didn't really fully realize exactly how, how what exactly like she knew that there was something there, but didn't realize the full extent until she actually saw it. Right. It's like, uh, oh, okay, that's weird. Isn't she like about to graduate from high school? <laughs> huh. Okay. And then, what the hell is this Haruko chick? Okay! The Vespa woman. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Mark of the Demon! <laughs> <laughs> I, that only works if you see the... I wish we could show the clips on this. Because there are so many things I want to talk about, but I can't do it without a visual representation There's of what's a, there, happening. There are a bunch of things that... There is so many <laughs> examples of like char- uh, of moments of character growth and development and relationships and metaphor that I can't explain without being able to show you guys what's happening on the screen. They do a really <laughs> good job of that. Like The visuals in the show are stunning, and they do a lot of storytelling visually. Which... Much of the... Yes. And, uh, which again, you sh- really need to see this show and experience it for yourself. Yeah, like it, you, you can take our word for it. And sir, this is one of those shows that is just <sighs> you can enjoy it purely on a, a stoner haha that's silly kind of way, but it really rewards you for digging it in, digging in there, and like peeling back the layers and like like you going I, like, I, elbow I, I, deep into the chest cavity to feel what's inside there. <laughs> <laughs> I legitimately think you probably could teach teach like a course on this show, like, that, like oh yeah, that you could actually do like an actual academic study of this the show. I'm not like <sighs> I've studied just enough film theory to to be able to sort of suss out some of that stuff, but I also am aware enough of that um, my limitations in that area to know that yeah, I I I can't really get I I'm not sure I'm really. I don't know how well I could dive into it unless I actually spent time actually doing research first, and I, you know, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm not a film guy. I'm, I'm barely a visual arts guy, <laughs> <laughs> and I am none of the above. I just know what I, I like. I literally took a class on film theory in college. <laughs> I went to art school. Uh, some of it I was sober, so <laughs> I watch reviews online and use the same words they do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I I, I should I, t- I technically took a I took yeah. So the film theory course I took was primarily on Japanese cinema, uh, Chinese mm. and Japanese cinema primarily. Um, so I I watched a lot of Kurosawa. Uh, <laughs> oh, the tragedy! I wonder why you took that course. Oh, gee, I wonder. I have no idea, Gav. None whatsoever. <laughs> I didn't sign up for it knowing we're going to watch a bunch of Kurosawa. I nope. get to get a grade watching samurai movies and cheesy kung fu. What a terrible way to spend a class! Yeah, uh, didn't not gonna it. lie, I also took a class on animation because it meant I got to watch lots of cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> there was not much. There was not much uh, kung. There was no kung fu stuff in that actually. That class actually, mm. it was more. Uh, it was. There was some. There. I don't remember if there were any. I, 
I don't remember. Here's the thing: I don't remember the Chinese cinema parts of that as well. Mm. I remember. I like have vague memories of it. The stuff that stood out to me was the was the Kurosawa stuff. He was definitively the best direct, direct, director we watched. Whose stuff we watched in that the class? Uh, that I'm was shocked. The, it was the, that class, the yeah, well, yeah. The, you could probably throw him in with a bunch of um, Western directors, and he'd probably still be the best. Uh, I would say he or yeah. other Japanese ones, or throw him in with a bunch of any directors. I have no idea what you're talking about, Eric. It's not like he's legitimately my favorite director of all time. Period. <laughs> um, it was the first time. There were two films that I hadn't seen before when I watched that, that that we watched in that class. Um, uh, which were uh, Rashomon. I had not seen Rashomon before that point. Um, mm. I was aware of it, but hadn't seen it. And uh, wow, that one blew me the fuck away. Uh, <laughs> and the other was Stray Dogs, which was a ni- sort of a 1950s sort of film noir that he did. Huh. I don't think I've seen Stray Dogs. Yeah, he he did a detective. He did a 1950s sort of detective movie set in Japan, post war Japan. Huh. Post World War Two Japan. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> I thought he only did samurai movies. <laughs> nope, apparently not. <laughs> it's a good movie, uh, but any anyway, back to Fully Cooley. I got yes. Started. But yeah, the long story short is, yeah, I've I I know a little bit about film theory, but mostly enough to get myself in trouble if I start talking about it. Yeah, I, I know exactly enough to sound smart until I run into an actual expert. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm which picky. Is why I never, which is why arts. neither of us actually pass ourselves off as experts. Yeah. I, I'm the you... hill of visual arts, is what I am. So, <laughs> which is which is why at no point do we ever try and sound on this show like this is you know our opinion is uh, our opinion it's matters in any way. Yeah, it's literally just this is our opinion. Go and make your own mind up. Yeah, seriously. Yes. <laughs> like we have strong opinions to some of this shit because you know we're opinionated assholes. But because yeah. we're opinionated assholes and we are passionate about what we're talking about. Yeah, but like. I freely admit that a lot of the stuff we've said is like a lot of the stuff. There's a lot of stuff that we're like, yeah, form your opinion. We we might not agree with you. We will never agree with you if you if you go if you tell us that killing bites is good, for instance. <laughs> um, and we oh, will, we, what a wasted potential that was. And we will stare at you like how how what why. Similar 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 response will we get if you tell us that the parasites theme song is good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm that's... the metal guy. I don't even like the parasites. Not even I like the parasites. It just, oh, terrible, terrible way to work. It's just, <laughs> it's not good. Um, but like, and you know, we'll also like, you know, we'll be somewhat confused if you really, really like the Devil May Cry anime. Um, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't awful. Like it was obje- yeah. it was objectively ter- it was objectively badly done, but it wasn't like offensively oh, yeah. bad. It was just merely, well, this is lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the problem with that one. It was yeah. just lame. Yeah. <laughs> But you know the stuff we actually. But there's a reason we cover mostly stuff we like. Yeah. I mean, part of it is because we're 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 all watching this together. And it's like, yeah, I don't want to inflict crap on my friends, especially if I have to watch yeah. it with them. <laughs> I mean, that's only fun if you're in the same room. Where you get to watch their facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> and also, again, like there's some of the stuff like, yeah, this is terrible, and I, I could make my friends watch it. But a lot of that is, uh, but I don't want to watch it again because it was really bad. Having said that, a lot of the times, some of the some of the worst shit that we watch, like the only reason we get through it is because we're watching it together oh, for God the show. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. like Killing Bites, I would have bailed up for the first episode. I would not have watched yeah. that. That show was awful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that that that. It would have been so easy to hook me with that show. If like, it had been, if it oh, executed it all well. Moderately competent. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh. It just goes to show, though, the difference, because, because I mean, that that premise was, like you said, that was Eric Bate yeah. all the way, um, but the execution was just fucking awful across the whereas, fucking board. Whereas a show like this, like Fully Cooley, it's like I can't tell you what it's about, but it's a, but it was executed amazingly. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> Fully Cooley, I remember watching the first DVD like a week after it came out because someone bought it and being instantly hooked. Oh. The, the, now, this is, when I say first DVD, this is back in the bad old days when anime came out two episodes to a disc or VHS and you had to wait God knows how long for the next one. Uh... So, I saw the first two episodes on um, that, that someone had bought. 
I instantly went down to Silent Coast Video, spent way too much money on my own copy, and waited with bated breath for the next two. <laughs> and then the next two. I still have those copies. They're downstairs on my shelf. Nice. <laughs> but it is... It is always my top five, and I adore the fuck out of this show. And yeah, I was hooked for episode one. I was hooked in the first five minutes. I totally like, believe that. Like... Like, as I said, like, it it took a second watching for me to really appreciate it, and it's not in my top, my per, my personal top five. I wouldn't even say it's probably in my personal top 20, but not because of quality, just because it's not, it, it does, it, there's just little bits of it that just, it doesn't quite, com- like, I appreciate, I appreciate the show. I respect the living shit out of the show, mm. but, you know, it's not something I'm like, oh my god, I, like, I have to rewatch, like, when, I'm glad I've rewatched it again, because I, I, there's more stuff I dug out of it, but it's not one of those things that, like, I appreciate, I like doing that sort of thing, like diving into stuff and, like, mining, like, looking for new meaning and such, but it, it there's something about it that doesn't quite work for me on that level. It doesn't doesn't click with me on that level, I should say. Mm. As a, you know, as a, you know, it, because it, I, I freely admit that it's a, it, there's a lot to mine in there, it's just, I'm happy with the, what I've gotten out of it at this point, but I'm like, yeah. yeah. I, I've seen this show probably a dozen times. Yeah. Um, and I am always finding new shit in this show. Yeah. And what, a lot of the time when I watch it, I'm not looking for new shit. I'm just wanting to watch this batshit insane pile of beauty. Sure. And new stuff <laughs> finds me when I watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Why I love this show so much. <laughs> I, totally, I totally get that, dude. I really do. I res- like I said, I respect this show too much to, to you know, I, I, I basically, I think it's in my, t- it's, in, it's in my top 20 at least, just on sheer respect for the show. Yeah. It, it wouldn't probably be in my top list, but the, the, the list that I would put it on is, and maybe not right at the top, but I would definitely consider it on the list of um, gateway drugs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> for anime. <laughs> Gateway anime. Probably should have phrased that better. Not a, Gateway not a anime. appropriate term to use for this show, honestly. <laughs> well, well, you know. Um, no, it's because it's, it's one of those things. It's like, if you've got somebody who's new to anime, and in this day and age, that's an increasingly, you know, thin thing to find. But um, if you want something like, you know, they want to see what anime can be what what it can be about or what it can you know what they can do visually and all that kind of thing but they're like yeah but i don't really want to get into anything like lengthy or i don't want to bother with like a story of you know it's too in-depth or anything like that and you just want to just blitz them with something and say this is what it can be this would be a decent enough show to 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 say look here's basically an example of everything that anime can be in its weird and wonderful you know wonderfulist um I'm sure there's other short shows out there again, but again, if they're not really looking to get into a a story, anything deep or anything like that, they can. That's the thing with this show; you can take from it as much or as little as you want. Yeah. No, there are, for a lot of people that like. It basically it's one of those shows like, like literally just like yeah, even if the first episode isn't up your alley, give it another episode just because. Mm. It, it it does this weird thing where things start locking together in weird ways that you don't expect them to. Mm. Well, it's like they always say, you know, do the three episode test. Well, if you do the three episode test with this, you're halfway through. You might as well finish. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, I, I will say the three episode test. There are there are a lot of anime where you can like you don't need to do three episodes. You you're just like no no yeah like literally the three episode test is literally only a thing where I I really stick with it. The first show that really pro- that proved to me that yeah, three episode test is something you really should keep in mind is Madoka Magica, because <laughs> that show does yeah. a complete one eighty after at the end of episode three. <clears throat> yeah, it's like oh yeah, oh, I was that's on board the for, that, for the, the yeah. Here's the thing with Madoka Magica, which is also my top t- uh, five. I was on board for that because of the the weird ways that they would animate things and play with stuff, and then episode three happened. And I was like, oh, well, that's an interesting way to have your head bitten off by a giant clown worm. <laughs> I guess I'm going to watch the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, literally, this this was for a long time. Minoka Magic was legitimately Eric's favorite anime of all uh, up until it, up until Psycho uh, Bomb Psycho Two. Yeah, <laughs> Bomb Psycho. T- By the way, I don't know if we. Are you seeing a theme? Yeah. <laughs> Bob, 
Mob Psycho Eric likes is... weird ass shit is what it boils down to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mob Psycho 2 is probably in my top five now. Mm. I enjoy that show. I've but... never really sat down and, and laid mine out, but I probably should. It's fun. Honestly, it's fun doing it. Like, I don't actually order my top five other than, like, literally, what's my favorite? And that, that that's an easy one now. Uh, Admittedly, good... just just because of the number of shows that I've been exposed to while doing this, my prop top five, if not top ten, are probably in this list. You know, <laughs> in the shows that we've done. Yeah, I could see. Um, yeah. Just because of how quickly I've run out of ideas of, th- of shit that I've seen before. <laughs> um, but yeah... I'm just trying to think now of stuff that I would probably rate high. And this is the thing. This is the thing because the, the entire premise of this show is to show, you know, to introduce the rest of us to our favorites, to what we like. So hence, I got rid of mine really quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you you got us with the, you showed us a couple. Of, you got us to watch a couple of yeah. shows that were oh, yeah. stupidly that we hadn't seen. Gunbuster was I, fucking. Holy shit! Uh, yeah, that, that's that's the thing. The the the, the one thing that's, that's that's I've got out of this is the fact that yeah, I've managed to introduce you two who are far more you know experienced with anime and and learned than myself, shall we say? Um, <laughs> I've managed to hit you with a couple of uh, you know uh, from blindsided you with a couple of gems, which well, yeah, uh, the, the Gunbuster is one that like we'd all heard of. The one that blindsided of. Eric and both me and Eric was fucking Rideback. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, well, and Sy- Psychono also, but uh, different reasons. We don't talk about Psychono because we don't want to feel <laughs> sad. <laughs> Angle grinder of misery. <laughs> yeah, so, you know what we the, said about so, your Psycho- opinion. Psychono is literally the, the as Eric and I put it. You know, it is the best anime neither of us ever want to watch again. <laughs> Just, yes, absolutely. <laughs> you, know, you know that whole thing about you know we we'll agree. We you know you, feel free to go and make your own opinions, and we'll agree or disagree responsibly. Um. If you disagree with us on Saikano and you think this is an uplifting story or something like that, you know, you put it on for the kids, you need help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why would you do that to the kids? Well, you've got to teach them young, Eric. The world's going to grind you down. Everything, There's no job. Er- everything ends. Everything ends. <laughs> Ah, uh, but anyway, I know that. <laughs> yeah, coming back back around to fully coolly. But yeah, yeah. Uh, so obviously we're we we're, we're only talking. Technically speaking, there are two more seasons of fully coolly. Mm-hmm. I haven't even looked at them honestly. I haven't I, either. I, I've heard really. I've heard mixed things mixed. at best about both of them. And most. I've been of, reading. Yeah, I mean, I I appreciate the idea of, of trying it again, but fully coolly is just such this unique bizarre bit of alchemy I honestly don't know how you could try to get it to happen again and I'm curious but at the same time I'm terrified mm-hmm. so yeah it's one of those things where I sat there I like I when I heard that they were doing another season of Fooly Cooly my reaction was why yeah that was mine and then I found out that they had the pillows back together I was like oh that's a good enough reason uh, well, I, <laughs> just have them write music you don't need to do another show they can write music for, for, to write music or do something entirely new and different. I mean, and maybe they did. Maybe they kind of did that with with season two. I don't know. Yeah, I I do want to get around to watching again, but so, I, okay, I'm, I will say I'm this. Kind of scared. What I understand, from what I understand about season two and season three, is um yeah, there's um uh, the 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 carryover cast from between seasons is Haruko. I mean, that's uh, okay. I can see that. Literally, no. There's no other characters in common between them. I may, I don't like no other major characters. From what I can see, that that applies at the very least to the second season. I don't know whether the third season uh, follows that on. Yeah, I, all I know is that not we we never we will never see Nauta or uh, his friends again. They're not in the show anymore. They're they're done. Uh, that's fine. Their oh, stories yeah, no. are done. Like, I agree. I think it's great. What else are you going to do with them? That that won't be like. But yeah, like, It'll be, it would be a fair bit contrived if you'll have have her come back now he's of age kind of thing and it's like yeah. they pick him back, back up but it's, yeah it would kind of ruin the whole I mean point. I suppose you could have him come back in sort of the same ro- same way as Commander Amaro uh, in sort of the same thing at, doing the same position as Commander Amaro was but that would be just too sad 
That'd be, that'd be mm-hmm. disappointing. Because the whole point of Commander Amaro is he's a cautionary tale about what happens when you don't get over this shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you get big eyebrows. They're there to prevent her from controlling your mind. Those Which eyebrows. is apparently a thing she actually can do. Yes. At any rate. But yeah, um, it's it's also implied that um Haruka is basically ageless and keeps coming back every now and again. Yes. And the oh, no, that, that, was... that is pretty well established that they come yeah. back all the time uh, that she comes back every once in a while and leaves a bunch of human wreckage in her path. Yeah. <laughs> Though this time it, there's it, it she actually made things better. Yeah. But you know, the person that she ho- that she she was palling around with it, you know turned out to not profoundly disappoint her, unlike Amaro. Yes. Hmm. Um, but yeah, um... So yeah, I, I would definitely say this is, uh, this is on the list of, yeah, this is one of the best, this is one of the best shows we've covered. Just from a, a sheer quality standpoint and execution. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's six episodes and, uh, why the fuck not? Go watch it if you haven't. Oh, why the fuck not is because you have no soul and hate things that are awesome. I mean, that's why you wouldn't do it. To be fair, why the fuck not is the mission brief of this entire fucking show. <laughs> yeah, well, no. Why the fuck not is, well, it's, it, could, it could be killing bites. Yeah, the answer is it could be killing bites. <laughs> Which is easily the worst show we've covered on this <laughs> podcast. Well, at least I win that award. <laughs> To be fair, you would watch a couple episodes and were intrigued, and then we like watched the rest of it, and we're like, "Oh, at that this point, is... we're too far in." Yeah. Well, we're at this point, the show. Yeah. <laughs> we were gonna get a show out of this. Yeah, by by like episode seven, we're doing this for the show. <laughs> God, that that the, that the, that show is infuriating on so many levels. Like it there really was something was. That they could have done something interesting with that show, but there was not to so do it, not to do that... like a secondary review on that piece of shit. But it, it was it is basically just endemic of everything that's awful in anime in this in, you know in in that that kind of era. Pretty much lazy. It it, it, it you know it's it's not at least it's not an isekai. Yeah, at least it's not an isekai. <laughs> Like, imagine if that had been a, been a bad isekai on top of that. Oh, oh it doesn't have an a like underage sister that he's trying to fuck. Oh, you're right. You're right. No, you're right. No Emoto. You're right. That's a that's a big fucking plus, honestly. Yeah. It, it, anyway, I that's about. I think the same for season we, two we... that never <laughs> that never came around, thankfully. Subject to hand, coolly coolly. Let's get back to that. Yes, yeah, sorry, show we yeah. like. Well, which, uh, to be fair, the one one the, there is one thing you can say about coolly coolly. Um, it, it there are some sort of very unsettling relationships in this show for parts of it. Yes, um, and that's that's kind of the point. Oh, like that's the thing. All, it's pretty it much is... every yeah every relationship in the show starts out uh, unhealthy and bad. Yeah. Like it's it is it, like yeah literally again, you have you know Nauta is in has relationships with two women two two women who are significantly older than he is and he is twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it is not neither of them are presented as a good thing, is the thing. Yeah. Um. Uh, and there, there there is no way to interpret it uh, as. Well, I suppose you could interpret it if you try really hard and squint and <laughs> are concussed and has suffer from previous brain damage, you might be able to do. But <laughs> I will say, like literally, uh, you know, his relationship with uh, Mamimi ends. It's over. She goes away. <laughs> yes. She re- like it's like oh okay, and you know it, it actually like, ends like before she goes away, like. Yes. And she, part of it is she. She's the one that breaks it off. Yep. Well, it's she, the baseball episode, isn't it? Again, it's yeah, it's the baseball episode. She she breaks it off. Um. And, and sort of comes the realization, like, 
I'm convinced she comes to the realization just how fucked up it is. Um, but not, not until after she she breaks it off for entirely the wrong reasons. <laughs> oh, yeah. She breaks it off for the wrong reasons. And she breaks it off for the wrong reasons. But I also very much got the impression that, like, the, the 30 seconds of, of thought about it afterwards is like, oh, that was really fucked up even for me. <laughs> That was not the, the right way to deal with this. <laughs> and, you know, Haruko's Now, come, my little ship... mechanical friend. Let's devour the vehicles of all the people I don't like. <laughs> Wait, that's I love not on Mimimi, my revenge list? She's... Oh, my God. <laughs> I love Mimimi, but she is very, my, very, very broken. Yes, yes, she is. And, again, Haruko's relationship with, with Nauta is uh, really fucking creepy for a lot of the show. Yeah. Well, it's not just that. It's the fact that she also has a semi relationship with his dad as well. Like yeah. the thing is, the the relationships are largely one sided. Also, mm. yeah. Like she's play. Well, that's the thing. Haruka's basically she's she's, she's playing... messing with their heads and fucking yeah. around with them. Not not that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as much as both of them want that, there's no yeah. intent. But yeah, but is she even like. At points, she's like taunting now, now to saying, you know, you know, are you jealous of your dad and all this kind of stuff? It's like, dude. I mean, admittedly, there's, they're probably closer in age. She's probably closer in age to now to than his dad, than his dad. Uh, but still, well, he's fucking twelve. I, actually, I think I she, don't know if that's entirely true. I think she true. might be older than his dad. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. She technically yes. Everyone says she looks to be about twenty. Now you but... think, yeah, yeah, yeah. She it's she's implied she's terribly older. She's clearly older than that. Yeah. It's... You know, it, it, it never even occurred to me that, even though I've said it myself in these, it, it, like, not ten minutes ago. Yeah, she, she, you know, she, she visits on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah. She's not human. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Literally. She's playing with the animals in the petting zoo. Yep. But again, like if she starts, like her relationship with Nauta changes. She realizes that wow, I actually like. She spends a lot of the show basically, like, you know, the little things where she's communicating with her superiors through the cat. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> I love this show. I forgot about that. <laughs> then you're saying, no, no, I've not formed an attachment to anybody here. Oh no, she has. <laughs> no, no, she actually. Now to she 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 actually like wow it's very clear that it's like yeah now to damn it he's become a kid brother to me fuck I actually like hanging out with this kid god damn it son of a bitch <laughs> oh oh no he he's got a crush on me oh no, oh, no, he's no, got no. A it's more than a crush uh, how do I, now oh how do I handle this I uh, know let's run away together that was the bad that was the wrong decision that wrong was decision. I should not have done that wrong decision <laughs> well I need the problem is. The problem is, it's, it's a we should run away together because um I need still need to use him. Shit. Uh, fuck. <laughs> I don't want to use. I, it's like I feel bad about using him now. A little bit. Just, well, just there's, there is, well, there is. Oh, the last episode when like shit goes down, and she's like, "Motherfucker, that's not how it's supposed to work." <laughs> but to be fair, she she moves past the 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 pissed off at what happened thing after it resolved. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I shouldn't have been pissed off about that. I mean, I'm I'm still gonna be. I I still was, and I probably would be again in the future. But you know, I, I'm I'm aware that I probably shouldn't have been. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> hey, you want to you want to hang out with me some more? Uh, actually, you know what? Nah, you're just a kid. You're I'm, kid. I'm I'm gonna really, go. Really, really fuck shouldn't off do space. that. No, that's wrong. Wrong. I'm like, God, dude, go to high school. <laughs> I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> Go hang out with kid, kid, your friends, your the, the, the your friends you have that are your age. I know you have them. I've seen yeah. them. <laughs> the ones that are your age, not the seventeen year old. Your age. Go have an awkward, confusing relationship with Nina Mori, like you're supposed to at that age. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, she likes you. <laughs> yeah. No one actually comes out and says that. No, and it's... <laughs> no, no, of course not, because that's not this show. That would not be the show if they did. That would be explaining something. <laughs> that would be explaining something. That would be. Yeah. Here's the thing I want to say about this show. This show does not hold your hand, and no. um, it doesn't talk down to you. It doesn't hold your hand, and it trusts you to figure shit out on your own. Yep. Which I really appreciate. Oh yeah. Even if I don't always get everything, and I. Like I said, I've seen it a dozen times, and I'm always finding more shit. Clearly, I still don't get everything. 
I appreciate that lets me figure it out on my own at my own pace. Yep. And it doesn't just go and ram it down my throat or tell me exactly what's going on. Um, but it's there for me to figure out. Um, there are shows that don't hold your hand and blah 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 blah. Movie uh, shows and movies like that. And what it boils down to is they're just this is not that. <laughs> it's a tough trick to pull off, and this one does it like I haven't seen too many shows that does it better than this. Yeah, it's a good show. Yeah, there is there is there is that fine line between letting the audience use what's presented. You know, basically letting them make up their own minds based on what's presented, and other than trying to get them to figure out what the fuck happened because you were too lazy to tell them. Yeah. <laughs> or to, uh, to, to, to leave the right clues. Yeah. So yeah, long story short, it's a good show. It really is. It's one of the I mean, best. Yeah. I mean, this this is probably going to be a, like a relatively short episode of what we do because A, the majority of our episodes are unpacking the actual story itself, which we've said. The story is irrelevant. To a degree, <laughs> go go also, and watch that for like, yourself. Unpacking, like if we really try to unpack everything in the show, we will literally be Eric will literally not let us go until 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 like four hours. I, I have been holding back a lot during this. <laughs> yeah, partially <laughs> because I I have a lack of visual aids, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to sit here and describe every fucking line and every cell of yeah. animation. Yeah, if we which if means we let we'll Eric, be here forever. If we let Eric go, it would be a case of in like three four hours time. We're like, well, I think that. Ooh ooh no no. Remember this bit? Uh, and we. I have been fighting myself, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> It's again. But, it, there's there's so much to unpack, and uh. the thing the thing is, this this show is one of those where there's no point us unpacking it and trying to tell you about it. You have to go watch it yourself and make your own mind up. That's the, that's the thing about this show. Yeah, you have yeah. to make your own. Oh, like, yeah. like I said, like and, I said and, earlier, with the story itself, you've got to make your own mind up, make your own decisions, make your own conclusions. And just remember, this show is just so much fucking fun. Yeah. It is a giant, absurd pile of crazy. And for all the stuff that we're talking up about this, you can enjoy it just by getting stoned and watching the crazy sh shit happen on screen. That yeah. happened on screen. Did it, you mention there's the a reason why it was walks around with a repetition a on... <laughs> there's a reason why it was always on fucking Adult Swim for the longest yes. time. <laughs> it's yeah. Six episodes and it was on the... It was always on the TV. Yeah. Late at night. We'll let, late at night during while, while colleges were in session. We'll let you figure that shit out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how do we? How do we get the ratings? Well, the students. I mean, they're all pretty much stoned by about eleven. Just put that on loop. <laughs> all right. No, seriously, we're doing it every. I mean, I mean every night this week. Yeah. Every they won't night for the next six months. Are you kidding? They'll take a month <laughs> off and they'll do another <laughs> yeah. every day for six yeah, months. Yeah. You just show the whole series back to back every night, start about eleven. They will um, never turn the channel Honestly, off so like from what I understand, it um for a long time it was the uh the favorite show of the um programming director of Adult Swim. And yes, he was like, We're just gonna do this. This is the fully coolie time slot, the end. <laughs> 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 well, all right then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, it's it's a really really good show, and uh, yeah. So I mean, uh, we could do our usual structured final thoughts thing, but I think we've we've covered that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. Here's my opinion: watch the show, give it six yep. months, watch it again, then form an opinion. Hell, just give it a month. Give it a week. Uh, how if you binge it? Give it a week. If you take your time with it, and I suggest taking your time with it, um, give it six months, because it's it really rewards repeated viewings, and it's really even it seems like stupid fluff that happened on screen. It will take your brain time to unpack it, even if it's doing it like while you're doing other shit. That's pretty much how I watched it uh, when I first saw it, and it is one of my favorite shows. 
like like I like I said earlier, you can get as much out of this show as you want. If you want to de- to delve deep into the psychological, you know, of all these characters getting out of their funk and moving on to the next stage of their lives, you can. If you want to watch a show about an alien chick that beats people around the back of the head with a guitar and knocks robots out of their heads, you've got that too. <laughs> also, the music kicks ass. And that's the music kicks ass. And it's really pretty. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would say this is a definitive recommendation from all three of us. Uh, yeah. And yeah, you it, honestly, this is sort of one of those shows that I, I honestly feel is kind of required viewing just in general. Just to, ju- as Eric, as Gav put it, you know, as a way to see, you know, something, it does something that not a lot, it does stuff that in a way that not a lot of other anime does. And mm. just for that alone, it's a way, that, it's, something, it's, a, it's a thing you should watch just to broaden your horizons on what anime can be? Mm. I should say what what animation what an, what an animated show can be, not just like anime. Yeah, because there's just not a lot of there's not a lot of animated shows that do what this show does. There are a lot of shows that try, um, and they some of them do it to do what do it well to varying degrees, honestly, but. Um, I don't. Th- I I can't think of any show that does it does it, that attempts what this is doing, and it, it does it as well. Yeah. Um. Now it might end up, end up being your cup of tea, and that is totally fine. <laughs> but I, yeah, we all liked it, uh, at least to some degree. It, it's fu- it's and it's it's funny. As 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 Peter and Eric said earlier on, if you like the surrealist or the absurdity and all that kind of stuff, if you're a fan of Monty Python, if you're a fan of things like Mighty Boosh, Spaced, yeah, um, all that kind of shit. I mean, I mean, hell, there are sections of this that feel like it could be an Edgar Wright production. Yeah, totally. <laughs> really does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would be if shocked not... if Ed Wright didn't adore this series. Yes, I've got, I was about to say I've got a feeling this will be on his show. Or if he hated it for doing his shtick better. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, he would have still been in college by that point, so you know, <laughs> you know, like uni. But yeah. Oh dear lord, I can I I am convinced that Simon Pegg and and Nick Frost watched this like drunk off their ass on their sofa at least five times. <laughs> Like, <laughs> the, like that had to have happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that that makes that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you like anything like that sort of sense of humor, that sort of of style, you, you'll 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 get something. You'll get something out of this. Whether you, like I say, how much you get, that's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. So yeah. So that wraps this episode up. Gav, you have the next series selection. What's your pick? Uh, well, I enjoyed the bit with people, giant robots, and people getting hit around the head. So, um, punching is a power. We're going to do Megalobox. Ooh, that should Ooh. be fun. That should be fun. I've been meaning to get to that. Yeah, show. That's, that's been on my yeah. list for a while. So yeah, get to take one off my list. Great. Robot punching. It's like real steel, except people get hurt. (laughs) Well, unlike real steel, it's not Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Uh, (laughs) Real Steel is legitimately a Rock'em Sock'em Robots movie. Oh, absolutely is, and it's amazing for it. I love it. I actually really do like that movie. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) That's going to do it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, We'll probably be back in a few weeks. Megalobox is not six episodes long, so we won't be able to finish it this weekend. (laughs) Probably not. No. I think literally the only 12 episode show we actually finished in, in one week was literally Kato. And that was literally because, where the fuck is this going? Yeah. yeah that, that we was got, we much kind like, of burned through that, yeah. Now, now, now what? You can't leave it at this. Next episode, now. <laughs> I don't care if it's 3 a.m. Next episode, now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You have to sit there going, it's always 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyways, yeah, see this in a perpetual 3 a.m. <sighs> All right, guys. See you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.